So we're here at the example table, and in this video, we're going to be looking at limits at a real number. So when we write something like the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l, we're saying something about the way f of x behaves when x is near a. We're not saying anything about what f of a is. f of a might not even exist. Right, and this, this limit statement can still hold. So we're only talking about values that f of x takes on as x approaches a. And what, what we're saying is that those values get closer and closer to l. So probably the most common uh, type of problem that you'll see is a problem like this, where f of a doesn't exist. And so you can't even be tempted simply to plug a in to f of x. So let's look at an example. Let's find the limit as x approaches 7 of x squared plus 2x minus 63 all over x minus 7. So it's immediately obvious that we can't plug 7 in, right, because we have an x minus 7 in the denominator. So what we're going to do is rewrite this so that we don't have an x minus 7 problem. So step one is to say that this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 7. And well, what do we do if we have a quadratic always tempted to factor? This numerator factors into x minus 7 times x plus 9. And then this is still all over x minus 7. So now these x minus 7's cancel and we're left with the limit as x approaches 7 of x plus 9. And now we can plug 7 in to get 16. All right, so the limit as x approaches 7 of this thing is 16. Let's see what this means graphically. So what we just showed is that x squared plus 2x minus 63 over x minus 7 equals x plus 9 everywhere but at x equals 7. All right, these two things are equal except when x equals 7 when this thing is undefined. So the graph of the original function is something like this. It's just a line. It's the line x plus 9 with a hole at 7. So when we went through this process of algebraic manipulation to cancel the x minus 7, we replaced this picture with this picture. Right? We just filled in this hole with its natural value. Right? The, the thing that this should be is 16. And so that's why we get this x plus 9. That's why we can simply plug 7 in to the formula to find the limit. Let's do another example. Let's find the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x cubed plus 4x squared all over x plus 4. So once again, it's immediate that we can't plug in negative 4 to this expression because we have x plus 4 in the denominator. But we're going to do the same thing that we just did, namely factor the numerator and then cancel. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 4. Well, we have an x cubed here and an x squared term here. We can factor an x squared term out of both of these. So we get x squared times we're left with an x term here, we're left with a 4 here, so we have x squared times the quantity x plus 4 all over x plus 4. The x plus 4's cancel out, and we are left with the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x squared. And this is 16. So let's look at the graph of this, just like we did before. What we just showed is that 
this expression, for every value other than negative 4, this expression is the same as x squared. So the graph of the original function is just a parabola with a hole at negative 4. So we replaced this thing with what seems a little bit more natural, namely this hole filled in. And we get this parabola. Well, that's not a very good parabola, but you get, you get this picture. And now we have the natural value filled in at negative 4, we have 16. And that's, those are two examples of how you find limits algebraically.